Welcome to this Dr. PPT.in medical update. Today, we are diving deep into the 2025 clinical practice guidelines from the Endocrine Society of India on managing obesity. Look, this is an absolutely critical update for every single practitioner, and we're here to break down exactly what you need to know for your day-to-day -day clinical practice. So here's what we're gonna cover. First, we'll get a handle on the sheer scale of India's obesity epidemic. Then, we'll jump into the exciting new medications that are completely changing the treatment landscape. After that, we'll cover the practical side of patient counseling, the vital role of family-centered care, and we'll wrap it all up with the key clinical takeaways you can literally start using tomorrow. Okay, so let's start at the beginning, understanding the problem. Before we can even begin to talk about solutions, we've got to appreciate the massive and frankly very specific challenge that obesity presents right here in India. Let's kick things off with a number that should really make us all pause. 254 million. That's how many adults in India are living with generalized obesity. I mean, think about that for a second. We're talking about nearly 29% of the entire adult population. This isn't just some emerging trend. It's a full-blown national health crisis unfolding in our clinics every single day. And if you thought that number was alarming, get this. 351 million. That's the number of adults with abdominal obesity. And here's the kicker. This number is even bigger. It highlights a really dangerous pattern of central adiposity, which, as you know, directly translates to a much higher cardiometabolic risk, even in patients who might not look severely overweight at first glance. And this brings us to a concept that is so incredibly important in our part of the world, the thin fat phenotype. You've all seen this patient, right? They walk in, their BMI is technically normal, but their body composition, high body fat, low muscle mass, is telling a completely different and way more dangerous story. This is exactly why just relying on Western guidelines can cause us to miss high-risk patients sitting right in front of us. So here's the most crucial, practice-changing point. The new ESI guidelines make it official. Our thresholds for intervention have to be lower, period. For our patients, we now need to be thinking about pharmacotherapy at a BMI over 27. And if they have comorbidities, we're starting treatment at a BMI of just 25. This is a fundamental shift from the standards you see in the West. Understanding that we need to intervene earlier is the perfect segue into our next section, which honestly is where things get really, really exciting. We are talking about a true revolution in anti-obesity medications. We are in a completely new era of treatment. Just take a look at this comparison. I mean, it tells the whole story. For years, all we really had were drugs like Orlistat, with pretty modest results. Then came the GLP-1s, like liraglutide, which was a step up. But now, look at the numbers for semaglutide and the dual agonist erzepatide. We are talking about 15 to 21% average weight loss. This isn't just incremental progress, folks. This is a quantum leap. And you don't have to take my word for it. The guidelines themselves nail it with this quote. This isn't just about slightly better drugs. It's about unprecedented efficacy. What this means for our patients in real terms is that for the first time, we have medicines that can achieve weight loss results that start to approach what we see with bariatric surgery. This completely changes our treatment goals. And believe it or not, the revolution isn't slowing down. Just when you think it can't get any better, it does. Look at what's on the horizon. We've got combinations like catrezomad and even triple agonists like ritachertide pushing weight loss into the mid-20s. Plus, effective oral options are coming, which is just going to be an absolute game changer for our patients. Okay, so we have these incredibly powerful new tools in our arsenal, but how do we actually use them effectively in the real world? That brings us to section three, the art and science of patient counseling. Because getting this part right is the absolute key to turning that efficacy we see in trials into real effectiveness in your clinic. To help with that, the guidelines give us this brilliant and super easy to remember framework called BLAC. So before you start any new medication, you simply walk the patient through the benefits, the limitations, the potential adverse effects, the cost, and you make sure they have the right knowledge to use it. It's a simple but really comprehensive checklist for every single patient. And this is what that framework looks like in action. It's so much more than just writing a prescription. It's about setting realistic expectations that this is a gradual journey. It's proactively discussing the common side effects and how to manage them. It's explaining why we have to titrate the dose slowly. And of course, it's scheduling that all-important regular follow-up. All right, let's zoom out for a minute because our patients don't live in a clinical bubble, right? They exist in a complex social world. 
Section 4 of the guidelines really emphasizes something we all know intuitively but often struggle with, the absolute necessity of social and family-centered care. So what does that actually look like in practice? Well, it means moving beyond just talking to the patient one-on-one. -on -one. It's about bringing the family into the conversation for things like shared meal planning. It's about finding physical activities the whole family can enjoy together. It's working with them to change the home environment and holding dedicated family education sessions. And again, this quote from the guidelines just hits the nail on the head. This is a true paradigm shift. We are not just aiming for individual behavior change anymore. We are aiming for the transformation of the entire family ecosystem. That right there, that's the new gold standard for success that's actually going to last. Okay, we've gone through a ton of information. So let's boil it all down in our final section, the key clinical takeaways. What do you need to start doing differently in your clinic tomorrow morning? For our colleagues in primary care, the message is crystal clear. First, start treating obesity screening like a vital sign. Every patient, every visit. Second, don't wait for complications. Start those wheat discussions early and always use respectful, person-centered language. And finally, please document more than just BMI. That wheat circumference is absolutely critical. For specialists, the mandate is clear. Act on those lower treatment thresholds we talked about. Intervene earlier. And remember, these incredible new drugs, they are not magic bullets. You absolutely have to combine them with behavioral and social support. And finally, you have to implement structured follow-up protocols to track progress and make adjustments. So if you only remember three things from this whole update, make it these. Number one, India's obesity crisis is enormous, it's growing, and it's unique. Number two, we are living through a therapeutic revolution with new drugs offering 15 to 25% weight loss. And number three, to actually succeed, our care has to be comprehensive, it has to be individualized, and it has to be deeply embedded in the patient's social support system. And of course, the work doesn't stop here. The guidelines leave us with the next set of big questions. You know, what will the long-term cardiovascular data look like in our population? How can we best integrate traditional Indian diets with these powerful new therapies? And maybe most importantly, how do we build scalable community models to deliver this kind of care to the millions who need it? The answers to these questions will define the future of obesity management in India. Now, I know that was a lot to take in. So to help you really digest all of this and maybe even use it for your own teaching, a full PowerPoint version of this presentation is available for you to download in the library section of drppt.in. Thank you for joining us for this drppt.in medical update. We really hope this breakdown of the 2025 ESI guidelines gives you the tools and confidence you need to help transform obesity care in your practice.